Welcome to this little screencast where I want to show you how you can easily port your Sailfish OS SDK Alpha 1 application, so Qt 4 based application, to Sailfish OS SDK Alpha 2, Qt 5 based application. I did already a video on programming for Sailfish OS with the Sailfish OS SDK. This was based on the Safish OS SDK Alpha 1, so the Qt 4 based application that I coded in here. I coded a little application called Noto. You can, uh, I will of course link my old video, older video, because all the programming stuff and, and, and uh, the uh, QML and Qt Quick things did not change so much, so they are basically still applicable for the newer SDK. Uh, the thing that I want to do now is just simply port over my old Noto application. Uh, this is how I called it, a note-taking and to-do application that I've written basically with um, the Selfish OS SDK Alpha 1, so the Qt 4 based, and I want to port this over to the Qt 5 base. And this needs a little bit working and I want to show you how easily it can be done, especially with the database uh, stuff running in the background, so accessing the database and so on. This has a little bit changed and you need to reinstall or you have to install something in uh, the emulator for uh, it to work successfully. So um, as I had some troubles uh, in doing this, I will show you how you can do this very easily. And um, yeah, basically I start up going to my code here, my old Noto code from the uh, first SDK alpha. And as you can see here, this is basically the code. What I wa want to do is just simply not mess with this code here. I will leave it as it is and I will create a new project with uh, the Safefish OS SDK IDE Qt Creator. And uh, let me Go full screen here, create a new project, a Safish OS Qt Quick application, and uh, choose a location, I'll save it to, for the sake of this demonstration, to temp demo. And just simply uh, name it Noto minus Qt5. Okay, debug release, I will leave this on. This might be very um, useful for. Uh, for porting stuff over uh, if you have the de debugger on and then you can see uh, things working and uh, description and node and to do taking application and ah, no long description here and yeah okay and yeah basically what I want to do is uh, just simply start with a fresh new um, project basically because of the uh, CPP files, so the Selfish OS application CPP file basically has uh, lots and lots of changes um, regarding Qt5. So you can see here uh, Qt Quick View or Qt Quick View <laughs> um, is the new element in here and let me just simply put this on this side, show you in the old project file that Um, lots and lots changed in here. Uh, we can see not lots, but but some of the um, the included uh, stuff has changed basically from Qt4 to Qt5, and um, so I did not want to mess with this. As you can see here, the code changed. So why not taking a code that is already there and um, working? <laughs> uh, and yeah, so I basically started off with a new project. So what I'm gonna do is um, with this new project is simply copying over old stuff. First of all, the main QML is everything is right here. I do not want to change something. But what you need to keep in mind is that Qt Quick has changed from uh, version 1.1 to 2.0. So you have to uh, just simply keep this header for all the other pages, just like for example the first page. So what I will do is just simply go into my old project, go to pages in here, open up the um, first page QML and I will copy everything over from from uh, besides the header, or no I have to copy this header also, 
So besides everything from the header, except things that are stuff that you just simply added yourself, just like for example, I added my config.js as, as an, a database JavaScript file. Copy this over and replace basically this. And let's see, seems to work. Uh, another thing that has changed the Safish Silicia theme now uses a big T instead of a small T. So if you are using the theme property anywhere here, search for theme, just like for example theme padding, you have to change this to a capital T. And yeah, this also, capital T, capital T, capital T. And I think this is everything. Yeah. So this is our first page. The next, the next thing that I want to do is uh, just import those two uh, QML files. What I will do is just simply first copy them over in here. What we can do now is just simply go to our project. You can see they are here, but I will just simply, for the sake of this, uh, just simply add them to my project as well. Uh, not this add existent add an existent file. So now they added especially useful if you are um, uh, using a virtual control system like Git. Um, this way you have the option to just simply add them to the to your Git repo as well if you don't want to use the command line. Um, so the next thing is the next important thing is our um, config.js. Um, config.js file from here, which is basically the database access. So we create a database and we'll just simply put in uh, the to-do and uh, notes in there. So let me copy this over to the note of 5 application. And what I do in my project is simply, you can see it here, uh, should appear under other files, but it does not. Just simply add them or add this file and now it appears under other files. What I need to do is in the project file for this to work, but this is especially, I think, I never got it to work when, when, when it was in uh, other files in here. So I put this config.js file also in the QML files uh, project uh, equals uh, thing here. So config.js, and this allows me to then just simply, like in the first page, to uh, have access with this simple import line. Otherwise it just simply does not work. You can also create an Qt um, resource file and put it in there and work for you with Qt resource files, which is also pretty nice, but but uh, I want to keep it simple and this is one simple way to do this. Um, okay, the next thing is of course note and uh, to do. They need to be changed here to Qt quick 2 in the header, to do also. And if you're using theme in here, which I do probably, like theme padding in here, I have to go to the first page and import this Safe Stilicia theme and put it right in here. And of course, theme needs to be changed to a capital T in here again. I uh, think it's for this one here. And such theme, I think I have a little bit more in here. No, this was everything. Interesting. Thought I had more themes. No. Nope. So uh, save everything here. Mm. The next thing that you need to do is a little bit tricky. Is the tricky part. It is opening up the uh, start is the SDK and then start the emulators. Um, the SDK started. We can start the emulator. And what you need to do is just simply, and there's a little trick that I learned also, um, is installing the uh, local storage 2.0 file basically, or the local storage uh, component of Qt 5, because it's not installed by default on this uh, image. So what you can do is just simply to connect to this uh, emulator is just simply 
when you're running Linux or uh, Windows or even OS X, you have the option to SSH into the emulator. And you can do this uh, with FSSH and uh, the port is um, 2223 and the username is Nemo and the uh, host is basically localhost. And it will ask for your password. The password, the default one is Nemo again and now you're locked in as Nemo on the Selfish OS SDK. What you need to do is just simply sudo zipper in. So we have to install this uh, little uh, uh, yeah thingy which is called Qt5 Qt declarative uh, import um, no tab completion here mm, import local storage plugin local storage plugin. So this will just simply install this uh, plugin and as you can see here it's, it, uh, it's telling me that I've already installed this because I did it forehand, beforehand and yeah this is basically then ready so you can exit out of it and now you have the option everything is in place so you can run your application. So the next thing that we need to do is just simply because if you try to run it now uh, yeah you will see that it will run it will run it won't run uh, I have a problem with my because my project is out of the shared home directory which is which is uh, this one here I had a project called with the same name so there's a problem in here but um, normally it will run but it will crash as soon as it uh, tries to um, yeah, open up the config.js file and tries to read something from the config.js file as it um, basically tells you that the open database sync is not defined and you cannot use it. So what you need to do, as you can, as, as you see bef saw before, that uh, this um, local storage plugin is now a separate plugin. We have to import this into our GS file so that we can just simply then uh, really work with our open database sync uh, option and uh, yeah, create our database and, and connect to our database and do all the funny stuff. So the easy thing that I found out is just simply import here with uh, the import starts with a dot in JS file. So import uh, the Qt quick local storage, Qt quick dot local storage I think it's called let me just look at my cheat sheet local storage yes local uh, storage 2.0 because of the 2.0 release in uh, Qtquick 2.0 of course and we, we just import it for the sake of this demo as ls so that you have uh, which stands for local storage so that you have a uh, small little helper that you can use so our function get database now we have to change this to use this uh, Qtquick, uh, Qtquick local storage 2.0 so we'll use ls dot local storage you can see here dot open database sync and yeah this is basically everything and yeah this is basically everything for our little uh, port of our Nota application to Qt5 so as you saw it's not working here because I've changed the home directory and have the same name in here. What I would do is just simply I have, have uh, of course I prepared this beforehand. I created this project in my let me close this in my home directory as well. And let me open up my project from my home directory. Have it stored in my own cloud here. Selfish projects, not a cute five, and there's the project file. And uh, yeah, basically, let me close all these files. You can see I have the same file structure in here, and my JS file. You can, you can see the same things that I did here. And what I would do now is just simply execute this, and this should then just simply work on my Selfish OS uh, emulator. As you can see it works and I already created some uh, files like the test and to test to do. So click on test you can see it works. Test note in here. Uh, test to do works. 
save this you can see if we go in here save this um, one I think was also checked maybe I found a bug let's try this again oh I found a bug as you can see here so the test 2 is not checked so I have to find out why it is doing this it was working I think in the Qt4 version so I have to take a look at the code in here to see uh, why it's not working it's get basically getting the signal that it's not checked or was not checked which is somehow interesting so I have to take a look at the code maybe it's something wrong in there uh, but this is basically how you can just simply do your thing and uh, port over your SafeVisualOS SDK Alpha 1, so Qt4 based application to SafeVisualOS SDK Alpha 2, Qt5 based and uh, this emulator is a little bit, this window is a little bit slow as you can see, uh, a, a little bit uh, small as you can see. One thing that I uh, not um, uh, still did not get to work is just simply the the cover view, so that it when when I change an or perform an um, action in here, that it just simply go to full screen again. So if someone has an uh, option also in C plus plus or something like this, how, how you can do this, an easy option example code or something like this, I would it would be very helpful for my little note application because if I go here, I want to create notes, nothing. <laughs> Nothing appears basically. If I click on this, you can see I can create uh, to do's. And when I do the note stuff in here, Notepad, I can create a note. So this is basically working, but uh, it's not getting, getting into full screen. Maybe it's not intended to do this. Uh, I really, uh, the, the example code that I saw were basically media players or image viewers that then just skip to the next song or image. When, when you do this and, and uh, have, have a little cover preview in here. Um, but I think this is a nice option if you have a node application uh, running in the background and you don't have to start it every time. You have it running basically in the background, you can just simply swipe here to the left to create a to-do list. W would be very nice to do this. So uh, maybe it needs to be implemented. Maybe in, in, in I don't know in, in, in somehow a uh, signal or something that you can send in your QML that will automatically trigger something in the operating system to just simply move this window to full screen again would be very nice. But uh, yeah, this is basically everything for this little uh, screencast and demonstration. I hope you enjoyed this, and yeah, thanks for watching. Eh, by the way. I almost forgot to tell you that this uh, Noto application and my Qt5 board basically of it are now available on GitHub. So we'll just simply um, we'll just simply put this uh, link also in the show notes or in the uh, in the description of, of the YouTube video so you can uh, check out my code. You can uh, of course tell me something. Uh, what I, what I've done wrong and what I could do better, and you can also commit or send me patches or um, even code that allows me to do a lot more with my little note application. Yeah, and yeah, now this is everything for this screencast. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed this, and thanks for watching.